Hello, this is Ryan from the podcast you're about to listen to, um, explaining this episode a little bit, just a little backstory. We had Carl Hamburger on this episode from uh, Who Are These Podcasts, which is a podcast that reviews other podcasts, um, and review is a light word for just um, making fun of for however long. Uh, so they featured our podcast, somebody had found it um, on their site and sent it to us and uh, B and I thought it was funny. Chick was furious. But Chick reached out to the guy and, and asked him if he'd come on the show. And he was nice enough to come on the show. And we definitely had a lot of disagreements. Um, we also recorded a watch-along to that to their episode where they reviewed us. And we commented on it and, you know, made fun of them and po- poked back to them a little bit. Uh, so that'll be on Patreon. We'll find a way to post that and link it and get that up and running. Um, but, yeah, just a little backstory. This is a guy that made fun of us for a half hour. And we had him on the podcast to talk about what he does and why he does it and there's things I wish I had said and you know but this is what it was um so I hope you enjoy uh this episode of the adult babies podcast ladies and gentlemen voted Long Island's best podcast by a bot farm in Russia it's the adult baby show I'm a sweet boy I'll let a girl <laughs> suck any part of me. I mean, yeah. honestly. It's just in my mouth, just... <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, I'll try anything once. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Except getting to work on time. <laughs> <laughs> you just ruined my day. Fuck your day. Oh, let's get the feet involved. It's not a nut. Maybe I shouldn't say that out loud with you. Some people yeah. are absolutely uh-huh. disgusted by me. He ain't lying. It's... Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Adult Babies Podcast, episode 297. I am B. I'm Chick. And I'm Ryan. And we have a very special guest, Carl Hamburger. How are you? What is happening, fellas? Thanks for having me on the show today. Definitely. Thank, welcome welcome on, to yeah. the show. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah, man. We, I, I was curious if uh, you get a lot of requests to be on podcasts that you um, shit all, all over. <laughs> I get some, for sure. Not a lot, though. Uh, I think the, uh, the two ways people usually play it is they either don't know about it and ignore it, know right. about it and ignore sure. it. Um, or they just slap back on their show, which is why I've always felt like um, it's all fair game to go after people who have shows on the internet because they also have a platform, so they can slap back all they want. We've had some really funny ones that I've played on my show where people come back at me pretty good. Uh, yeah, we actually just recorded one. Um, we don't have a Patreon. Uh, well, we do have a Patreon, but we don't. We haven't like done anything with it. So we did one for that, and we were kind of like banking it. Um, I. I think my problem with Patreon is I can't imagine anybody paying for more of this. But uh, so, so we do have a we do have a copy of that, and we could send it to you if, if you want to. You know, like to yeah, continue. Yeah, that'd be to, great. I'd, um, I'd love to pull some clips and play on the show. <laughs> yeah, this would be a continuing <laughs> just a circle of just yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, we I think we played back the same way that you played with us. But yeah, I was I was just curious about the uh, the birth of this. Were you were you an Opie and Anthony fan? It seems. You know, yeah, pretty obvious it, that you you also were, yeah. Who, yeah, who are these podcasts? Really came out of the Jocktober segment That's that a, they used yeah. to do on, on Opie and Anthony. And uh, my my buddy who moved across the country and I were keeping in touch. He was a stand-up comic. We were keeping in touch, and he wanted to start a podcast. I said, "Oh, that's a great way for us to communicate once a week." So um, I came up with the idea of no one because at the time, Anthony was fired. Howard Stern was getting lame. So I'm like, there's really no shows I'm latching onto. I'm listening to Adam Carolla here and there. But uh, I was trying to find podcasts. And as I was looking for podcasts, but these all suck. There's just amateurs, amateur hour everywhere. So what if we did a Jocktober style show for podcasts? There's obviously an endless amount of material out there. Well, everybody's doing one. I mean, yeah. it really yeah, is. It's, the, uh, it's, and this was it's 2016. Great. I mean, you know, you think about it. There's only been probably five times as many podcasts created since then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. So exactly. that's how long you've been doing it since 2016? Yeah, yeah. This is our ninth year that we're on. Wow, right now. that's impressive. So how did you find us? Like, how, what's your, you know, like I see you smirking already. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm smirking, and I I feel really bad about this. I was trying to do some research before I came on the show today to know what I said about you, and I found this show that we did recently called The Usual Bet with uh, ABDL people. And I thought that's what this was. And then I came out here and went, oh, shit, this is very different. These are different people. So I don't remember how I found this show. Someone suggested it 
or uh, if producer Chris <laughs> that's, maybe found it. That's more insulting. If somebody else is out there, like, these guys are really these shitty. You gotta, go, you gotta check these guys out. Oh, <laughs> we get suggestions all the time. And some of the ones that I found recently, you know, I say I found, but some of the ones we featured recently where they only have a few views on YouTube and they're gold. It's really fantastic. I don't know how the listeners to our show find this stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, well, are, are you saying gold isn't like bad gold? Because I, yeah, I, I, good I, for us. yeah. <laughs> I, I did, I did, I, I asked these guys, I'm like, I wonder if they ever come across podcasts that it's like, this is actually really great. And like, do you, do you spotlight those podcasts as well? If you find something that's a great podcast that deserves to have more viewers, would you also spotlight them? Yes, there have been times. God that damn I've listened to shows. In fact, <laughs> um, the Dick Show was one of the early ones that we did, and now I'm friends with Dick Masterson, yeah. uh, the host of that show. Because I was like, oh, no, I get where he's coming from. I like this. But also, Michael Rappaport, we re reviewed his show, and um, I went, oh, um, this, this guy's actually really funny, and I felt bad because I kind of sandbagged my co-hosts because they come over to the house. They're ready for me to, like, go off on Michael Rappaport. And I'm like, no, this, this show's great. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're like, oh, shit, I didn't. Wasn't ready for that. But can I tell you what's really funny about my mix up with you guys today? Yes. So now I'm going back and finding the adult baby show review and I'm reading what I wrote. So now I'm remembering three truckers mm -hmm. crack themselves up. Okay. Talking about uh, which exit number and stuff like that. Now I remember that. And um, <laughs> I thought you guys, when you reached out about adult babies, we did this show where people pee in their diapers, these adults. Peter That's diaper. why you said that to me in the D. I honestly just kind of brushed Dude, that off. Like, what the I'm fuck so is he sorry. talking about? I'm so sorry. I thought you were the diaper peer, guys. Wait, there's so a I was all ready to come out here and ask you about your kink and what the fuck is that well, he all told about? Me, he, okay. he was like, why are you mad? You let people make fun of you guys peeing in diapers. And I was like, oh, my God. What? Like, it, it, yeah. I didn't know oh. what the fuck he was talking about. I kind of <laughs> thought he was taking another jab. Part of the reason why my I'm bad, like, really, fuck this guy, Carl. But I was like, <laughs> let's funny. have him. Because I'm not going to lie. Out of the three of us, I'm the uh, the sensitive one, so to speak. And I'm the I one can tell. Who, yeah, yeah I, I didn't get back to you right away. And you started motherfucking me. <laughs> yeah, he does was, that to us, too. <laughs> I'm not like, okay, I'm good. like that to everybody. Uh, I'm the one who really was like, fuck this guy. And my initial thing was like, let's bring him on and let me just... Yeah. Even though I'm not clever, it would have been nothing <laughs> funny. It probably would have just been me being mean and yelling at you. So yeah, this, the, but the background is B and I both are, have B's stand up currently, and I, I I've done I did stand up years ago. I haven't done it in years, but we were both O and A fans, and you know, uh, shock jock radio fans. So as soon as I think B, you found you somebody my, sent this to you. Uh, my friend. Uh, sent it to me i think i think he heard the mario bosco episode um and and he said you got to listen to this and then he goes oh shit you guys are on it <laughs> so um oh, that's funny. he found the show before he realized you were featured that's yeah funny. yeah um and then uh so i saw it. i actually thought it was a good idea like i i like the idea it's i think it gets people to listen yeah, I to, to i used to like shock to i used to like shocktober so my first reaction was like oh yeah i get it this is an old radio bit you know they they tear up people and they find things to shit on but chick doesn't have that background of um you know i'm that. just an angry guy i'm like <laughs> this around i'm like this with my friends i'm like this with a lot of people i'm quick to the yeah i, I get emotional and i i'm pissed right off the bat <laughs> And I honestly, the fact that you did answer back, because at first I'm like, this guy is not even, he read it, he didn't fucking respond. I'm like, he, like, I don't know, I was fucking seeing red. So <laughs> I sent them the whole chat after, yeah. like, I did talk to the guy and I was like, you know, I tried to settle it, bring it back down and like, all right, this will be fun. Yeah. So my initial thing By was the way, to just... The traits you're describing are the traits of a woman. You know that. Right? Yes. Yeah. No. No. Listen. <laughs> oh, nothing, we know. Nothing's anything wrong with that. It's fine. Yeah. Like. I, oh, there's uh, something very wrong with that. He's a man. <laughs> a man up. See, that, I, I, so this is a good jumping off point. I think um, you and I have it. We're just we're very different people. I have, I have different interests in you know what comedy is, and you definitely. It's a very. You still have a very early days Opie and Anthony. You know, a cringe humor like. Um, you know, that type of raw stuff. I'm a sensitive, I'm a, I'm a lip cuck is what I am. You know, I'm a, uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a sensitive soy boy. So I like making people feel better about themselves and like going on. So that's that. And you've mentioned on the podcast, you guys, these guys are too nice to each other. They're too friendly. Yeah. That's like we are, but like, I like to spread uh, love and positivity and I, but I like what you do. Like I liked, I liked October. I understand the, the need for that. It's, you know, different things for different people. So when I saw the criticisms, I was like, yeah, I understand like why this show is not for everybody, but like I had my question for you based on that is 
do you ever feel bad about it? Like, do you feel like bad shitting on people, making them feel bad about their podcast? Like, these are people that are just like having fun. Because one of the criticisms you have had with us is like that they think they're doing a show, and it's like, yeah, we are just like we're having fun. We're, we're having fun with our friends. We do it for a select few people who like it. Like, we don't have a lot of views, but we don't really care. Like, we do it because we have fun doing it. And it's like if people are okay doing that, like they're not harming anybody. Like, I feel like our, our show, our show is not bad enough to shit on. It might be boring at times, yes, but if the people that want to listen, that's that's fine. So. Like, I spend a lot of time, my time trying to encourage people to do the thing they want to do, even if nobody cares, even if it's bad. Like, I tell people all the time, like, I'll, I'll help you produce a podcast. Like, it's fun. It's just like, do it. It's fun. Who cares if anybody, like, don't, nobody's going to judge you. And, like, and then the, <laughs> and this, and the and this, like, I'm fighting you being like, you're, you're keeping people from doing things that they want to do on the internet because it's fun because they're worried about people like you shitting on them. So, like, that's I, like, I disagree. I, I disagree. I think I'm helping people like you raise your level because you're sitting there going, I'm just going to do this half assed. I don't care. I'm not putting a lot of effort into it. I get this all the time. And I, I listen to a lot of these shows that do this. They're like, well, my defense is I'm not even trying very hard. It's like, well, if you're doing a show, try harder. Yeah. Like, when you have a hobby, so I'm a musician, I have a bunch of hobbies. And I don't have ass them. I'm like, Carl, you praised your guitar in the last year? Nah, who cares? What's the difference? No, get fucking good at guitar. Yeah. Do it well. If you guys are going to do a show, do a fucking show. Try to build an audience. Try to build something. Make, make some money on the side doing it. Why not? What's the, why, why wouldn't you do that? No, I, I, I agree 100%. And I came on this podcast later. So, and I, I've been trying to push. Like they, they got to the point, like they liked doing it to a certain point and, and it's fun. And to me, it's like, it's got to be fun. It can't be, it can't be work. So like that has, of course, that has but, to be the But do you understand though, that's kind of a cop out. Like you're, you're doing yeah. a show, you're filming it, you have multi-cameras, you're yeah. producing it back there. You got a whole setup, you bought microphones. Yeah, 100%. And you're putting it on YouTube. Yeah. But I so wouldn't you can't say just that. just say like, why are you goofing on us? We're just three guys just like bullshit. It's like, cause you put it on YouTube. I don't go into anyone's homes on yeah. Easter and rip on them for the conversation. Oh, they have no, with the see, well, that's the thing. When you put it out there, you expect whatever. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not going to sit here and act like my initial responses were like, you know, yeah, I got a little pissed because it was us. But genuinely, I do love people getting ranked on. And I'm usually pretty like, sometimes I get pissed, sometimes I'm fine too. I felt like your whole shit was out of context and I didn't find yeah. it. Maybe it was because it was us, but I don't find you funny. And then I listened to a lot of other things. And listen, you're not my cup of tea. I'm not a huge fan of what you're doing. I get what you're doing, but like, I don't, you're not, I don't find your jokes clever. It's all a lot of, it's stupid. It's dumb. It's like hack jokes on yeah. the people. So it's like, if I respected where, if it was fucking, you know, somebody with an actual pedigree that I knew of shitting all over me. And I kind of took the criticisms like, yeah, I get it. And this guy has a leg to stand on. For me, it was like, who is this guy? But mm -hmm. that being said, I do get what you're doing. I, I you know, I, I, and I do respect it. I felt like a lot of our shit was out of context, personally, mm -hmm. and not understood. <laughs> Three and truckers. It, yeah, we're not <laughs> truckers. The whole rap battle was supposed to be kind of cringe. Like, me and Ryan are big rap fans, and... We were kind of, the episode before was like, it's funny that we listen to so much, and if we had to write something, it would be fucking dreadful. Like, how can we be so bad at rapping when we like it so much? And it's like... Yeah, then, no, I know. Yeah. And so, so obviously, I mean, I'm going to hear that and, and play it for people because it is cringe and, and, and not I And I don't play that. To, to each their own, and I, I understand where you're coming from. If, if I My first exposure to a show is them goofing on what i do i'm probably not going to go back through the back catalog and be like ah, oh, but he's making some good points over here oh i got so you, i totally yeah. understand that in my defense and this is going to sound douchey but in my defense you know you say you don't like the humor you don't think we're very good at this however i've had anthony kumi on my show jim norton on my show i've gone on both of their shows those are the guys who invented and made jocktober what it was and what it is yeah but you're also so stuck I, on I something like way not past its time right yeah. in my opinion like, like it's not there's like a, there's you're an doing something to stay relevant. Yeah, there yeah. is an audience but for I, it, I, but it's such a niche audience that it's not like you're groundbreaking or even being original at that. And you're shitting no, on other no, people. No, I've never claimed to, to be original with uh, what I'm doing, but you'd be surprised the size of the audience for this type of thing. Oh, I don't know oh, if you guys are familiar with the Dabbleverse. Do you guys know what the Dabbleverse is? I kind of saw a little what bit is of the it. Yeah, yeah. It's like its own. Yeah. I heard I, them talk. Jim and, and Sam were talking about it a little bit. <laughs> Better for you to yeah. explain yes. it than us. What is it? Because yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Rich what Boss is. came in and stepped his toe into the Dabbleverse and brought it up on the Jim and Sam show. Yeah, and right. it's great because yeah. Sam Roberts, who has not done my show, but I've been in contact with him. He doesn't want to play in the mud, but. Um, he knew That's everything surprising. about the Dabbleverse, which was hilarious. Basically, yeah. what happened is 
we started goofing on stuttering john's podcast back in 2018 and john didn't handle it very well <laughs> and his podcast is so bad that we started making that a recurring bit we'd go I was back say, and, and I've, play heard, clips. I've seen a lot of that on your page of stuttering john it seems like it's a battle yeah, so uh, so then what uh, there was in our subreddit, all these people were posting the Stuttering John stuff. And one of the mods of our subreddit said, this is too much Stuttering John, do your own thing. So they created this new subreddit and they called it Dabblers Anonymous. And the reason mm-hmm. why it's called Dabblers is because John was in, it, being interviewed by Chrissy Mayer. She said, I didn't realize you dabble in comedy. And he took offense to that. <laughs> because yeah. he's pro stand up. Yeah. So now we all call him the Dabbler and there's Dabblers Anonymous and there's this subreddit where if you go out there, there's a dozen posts a day, if not more, people creating these new videos. I, I, I saw stops. a little bit of it. <laughs> okay. So there's a whole world. In fact, we have DabbleCon 2 coming up. We're doing a live show. We did DabbleCon last year where it's just live podcasts and comedy, and uh, we do a Dabby Award show, and we have all these people come into a comedy club for a weekend and do this show. So when you say, like, what we're doing is niche and not a lot of people are, are into it, you're, you're wrong about that, and it's only growing. Yeah, no, I, I get that. And I feel like uh, my whole thing was like, I was a fan of that, you know, in the early 2000s as well. And then I just grew out uh, of it. I, I, I see what you're doing there. I see what you're doing. We've all, <laughs> we've all moved past that. Kyle. Yeah, I, 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 and I, I'm, I'm always it. surprised when people still enjoy that. I'm like, oh, I thought we kind of grew past that. I thought, but I, I that's personal. Like, I, I like more like fun, goofy comedy type of stuff that's like kind of, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I, I, I have a different outlook on life. So I, I I, I appreciate that, and I love a good roast, and I love good roast jokes, and I love people getting shit on, but it's like it has to be really well crafted jokes for me to appreciate it. Other than that, it's like, well, that's just a shitty person being shitty, and you know. Did you watch the Tom Brady roast? Yes, some of it. Yeah. Who'd you think was good on that? Uh, the only people I thought was good was uh, Tony, uh, not Kill Tony. Um, yep. Tony Hitchcock. Yeah. Nikki Glaser, I enjoyed. Yeah. She so I, had, I, I. I have a per- personal beef with Nikki Glazer. I like. I drove her to, to a comedy show once. We just came up on that on the show once before, and you guys were like, what was happening with Nikki Glazer? So yeah. I have a hard time watching her because I I drove her you know from the city to place a, a show out here. I saw a friend of mine put on a comedy show. It was like out in Long Island, so she needed a ride, and he booked comics to drive her. And she was annoyed there wasn't a black car. She goes, I thought I was getting a black car. How long do you got to be doing this? You have this gig before they start treating you with a little bit of respect. So like, I'm fine with it because she was actually ended up being pretty nice throughout the drive. But um, everyone in my family, everyone in my life is like, fuck her, she's a cunt. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she, I mean, she was obviously nice not fine me. with it if that's what you keep bringing up. You got a lot of hangouts, I feel like. No, <laughs> I, so I'm, I'm I'm fine with it. Like, but every time I see her, I I have that like I'm, I think about that more than like her jokes. Yeah. But I thought she was definitely the best. She was great. I thought yeah, she was very she was, funny. Darn. I thought she was. I thought actually the Kevin only Hart person I really enjoyed. So bad, Awful. it turned me off. Like it set yeah. the mood, and then they had to revive it. Like it, it took a while for it to come back. Be- and maybe Nikki's the one who finally did it because I thought Kevin Hart was. Terrible. Awful. Oh, yeah. The entire believe. time. But he, he was used typical to be a Kevin Hart. I wasn't that bad at that. But it was just typical. But he wasn't. Like, he kept repeating the same well, thing. But I just feel like he was just being his like, normal. I, and I, I I liked Kevin Hart early in his career. And, like, every year that passes, yeah. I just dislike him more and more. Like I, I kind of like him more as a person. And I just think he's, like, a good dude. But I don't really care too much for his movies or anything else. Like, I just, he's there. Yeah. I don't hate or do Yeah, I'm not really right, though, a huge fan. He kept repeating the punchline over and over again, which I'm like, as a stand-up, you have to know you can't do that. It doesn't get funnier. Yeah. yeah. So have you ever done stand-up? Uh, not really. When we did the DabbleCon I, the I saw first one thing that looked like year. you lost a contest and did something. Oh, I did do a roast battle. Yep, I did a roast battle. And then, um, oh, that was a thing. Yeah, so I do a show called The Creep Off. And we, when you lose, you have to spin a wheel of consequences. And I had to do a stand-up set that was written for me by another guy. So I did do that recently. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so when we he, did the chick, first... chick did a deep dive, and he was trying to f- find videos to so that we would hate you more than we than we do. Because, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, this oh, is, like, is, that was a terrible set. And the fact that you had to read a knock knock joke off a card was a little concerning. But um... yeah, that, that was the joke though. I didn't write that. It <laughs> yeah. was written for me. Yeah. Um, if, by the way, there there is. I can send you afterwards. There's a, a subreddit or two who hate me very much, and you can find lots of dirt on me because I do. I don't. You're not. You guys aren't the only feathers I've ruffled. Oh no! I, yeah, and yeah. Listen, I figured that, but I also didn't want to be like, oh, just come on here and just try and insult the guy and look like a fucking salty fucking. Yeah, right. that's not a, a, interesting. Yeah, to me. So I'm actually like, am curious about a little more of how you you. you fa- I appreciate. That. Yeah, I, mean, I did listen. do. Um, so w- when we did the first DabbleCon. Uh, last year it was, it was February of last year. We had a stand-up show, and we had um, 
Bob, the Reverend Bob Levy, Shuley, um, Agar, Anthony Cumia, Chrissy Mayer, Vinny Paulino, and I hosted it. So I did I did do like some stand up stuff starting the show and then in between comics, but I, I'm not a stand up. I never want to be a stand up. It seems like a horrible gig to me. It's great, I, great when it goes well, and it's the worst thing. I'm, I'm yeah, terrible it at it. Yeah. Like I, I, we do a show every year, so we usually have mostly local comics come on throughout the the year, and then every, uh, I don't know, once a year we host a comedy show, and we'll have them on, and I host it, and I'll do a set, and I'm terrible. I'm not funny at all. <laughs> like I would never be like, go look at my set, because then you'll there post is no that. set. <laughs> well, it was well, yeah, it's a three minute fucking little spiel, but. Uh, yeah, I'm terrible at it. But B, I was kind of thinking like you're like who's the comic? Now B's a legit good comic. I Great. Think, I yeah, feel. Uh, yeah. He, I, oh, thank you. And, and I would love to hear you take a you know you don't have to deep dive it. You don't have to deep dive. I don't have a lot of clips out there, so come see me. But I, I, that's well, what. I, yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you retort. I don't. My know. my friend um, Blind Mike Geary. I do a show called Who Are These Socials once a week with this guy Blind Mike and uh, Blind Mike. I'm a huge comedy fan. I'm a huge stand-up fan. I go to shows all the time. I, I really get into it. Blind Mike Where do you live, is, by the way? Are you, are you in Florida? Uh, I'm in Rochester, New York. I do have oh, a house right. in Florida. Oh, oh. Okay. oh, I thought you were in Florida, yeah. No, we're, I'm up in Rochester. It's where I'm from. So Blind Mike Geary is an aficionado when it comes to stand-up, and he does a great job breaking it down. He, he watches all the specials. He writes up reviews and stuff like that. So I would love to, if you have some clips, you want to send me some links, we can look at it on our show. Who are these socials? And I get, I get Mike on there. I won't tell him any of the background. He won't know any reason why <laughs> we're doing it. We can just get a, a fresh take on it. Yeah, we can yeah, get you a nice good. clean set. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got a couple, but but uh, yeah, I was just like you seem like a guy who likes stand up, and it was just uh, I was surprised that you were watching us in conversation. You're like, oh, which one of these guys is stand up? Because you surely you wanted to know that podcasting and stand up is two very different things. So somebody can be you know boring on a podcast, and we can be uh you know oh yeah, do you know what also, i made fun of way more than you guys is rich voss well and i think yeah. i tell you i saw Great a few people I've, gone to, I've seen him many times and he's yeah. very good so I think, and yeah. uh his podcast is I, really I actually bad. i have actually worked with rich voss, rich voss quite a bit uh i've hosted yeah. i i i used to work at governor's quite a bit i used to host and feature there and i've worked yeah. with rich and uh bob kelly more than anyone anyone else and i uh he does well, and this is like a hot take on Rich Ross, but I just feel like it's, uh, to me, again, maybe I just grew past it. I don't know. I just, I feel like he's a little one note, and I just, I want to see somebody well-crafted jokes, clever ideas, and he's just like, he shits on people the same, he's just like the same joke over and over again. And I don't think he's good on radio, so like I just, you know. I like listening to people shit on Rich Voss. I think that's I like fun. when Rich Voss is on a show, because I'm like, <laughs> oh, he's going to say so many stupid things that it's going to be funny how bad... And the the roast of Rich Voss was one of the best roasts yeah, I've ever yeah, seen yeah. in my life. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Rich Voss used to be great on Opie and Anthony because he would be the punching bag, sure. but he could fire back and get a few shots. Absolutely. He could, yeah, Absolutely. 100%. He's definitely capable of yeah. getting a, a great shot in, 100%. Yeah. Did you... Um, what made you want to... So did you... Agree to come on our show, not knowing who we were. Yes. <laughs> Do you regret that? I was so excited. It's so funny because I get up this morning and I'm uh, like, let me refresh my memory on, on what these adult baby diaper people are into. So I went back and I watched the video and I went, oh yeah, I got a lot of questions for these guys about this weird sexual fetish. And uh, it's in fact, my wife's a hairstylist and uh, she has. She is. A sex yeah. Does she ever do yours? Good one. Yeah. And she has a... Uh, he gets that a lot. I'm a sure. Sex I've seen well, this stuff. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> she has a, a sex therapist as a client. And she was talking about... Because she also thought that this is what I was doing today. And she was talking to her cl uh, client about this. And, you know, sex therapists, you think, would be very open-minded and no kink shaming and all that kind of stuff. And even she was just like, yeah, getting sexual gratification from peeing yourself is weird. That's that's, oh, a, it's that's very, yeah. so, our first episode. That's the conversation. Do you guys want to have that conversation? Do you want to pretend that you pee in diapers? Yeah, no. I wish I knew more about. It. Actually, yeah. uh, I I do talk about my um my kinks a little bit and my sexual adventures a little bit, and I I can't speak about it yet. But I did just recently express interest in a little bit of pee play, and I think did it's, you really? Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> we learned something right. new about yeah. you every day. But he's not, the, not he's peeing the my sexual fetish. Uh, yeah, guy I'm a, with us. Uh, and I don't know if you like a couple episodes ago. I I uh, 
I expressed that I think that Jim Norton was groundbreaking for people being more open about their sexuality and their kinks. And I, tr I truly think he changed the outlook of people being into transgender people and how like I'm, I'm more open to that now. And I could admit that now because I feel like you hear somebody like Jim Norton just say it offhandedly and it, that's not a big deal. But uh, yeah, and I think it's just like I'm, I'm interested in checking off boxes. So like, I just want to know. I just want to know what the P thing's about. Like, am I into it? And you know what I mean. So, but the whole so like you would the, pee the what? sheets and you, the, how does it work? You pee on you want to have somebody? a guy? You want to have a guy pee on you? No, no, no. My 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 girlfriend. Yeah, um, who has a vagina? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just to be clear, just, today's yeah. days you kind of have to be like yeah. she has a vagina. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we just talked about really, really interested. I'm in, in like I'm interested in like the squirting aspect of sex, and I feel like I, you know, they always say like squirting is just pee anyway. So I'm like, well, maybe if I, you know, maybe I'll just I get the taste you of what it's like. You gotta yeah. taste it, take it on but, to pee. But, I don't know. I'm open to anything. You, you know, sure are. You sure are. <laughs> Jesus, I didn't expect it to go there. Wow. Right, but <laughs> well, he's mentioned you want to talk about yeah. pee play, but well, I'm not, I have no interest. Peeing, peeing myself is disgusting. I'm all say that right now. I mean, whoever's peeing, the cleanup sucks, right? Yeah, that's, agree yeah. I mean, that's got to be the worst. So wait, was there you? You guys had a podcast of actual adult diaper people. That's yeah. a that's a something that was out there. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So the first uh, and he and B, I don't know why you're acting so crazy. The first time we our very first episode, I didn't know we there was released, a podcast about it. We had like a ridiculous amount of views that we did not need because <laughs> it was all from people thinking that we were fetish. Uh, adults wearing diapers We got a lot of DMs. We got a lot of weird shit after our first episode, and it was like they quickly realized that we just viewed ourselves as, like, big children because my roommates are my parents. I'm a fucking 40-year-old bum who lives at home with my parents. So when oh. you guys were making fun of us, <laughs> oh, you said, I think you thought oh. I had real roommates. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. That was the like, funniest thing you've ever said, by the way. <laughs> but I have no problem. And I have no problem people that. taking shots at me. Like, listen, I had some issues in my life. I'm where I am now, and I'm not ashamed of it. It is fucking what it is. Yeah. Um, I felt like there was a lot of things that was like, it was like, oh, he smokes ciggies in his house. And I'm like, I, I don't even smoke. Like, I, I smoke pot, and I was a, kind of a joke me making fun of myself. Yeah. So my whole, my major thing was a lot of out of context things. And now I understand kind of more about you. I respect you coming on and yeah, I, and I, I get where you're coming it. from yeah. a lot more. So I'm, I'm honestly really well, not even mad about the whole thing anymore. And let me, let me <laughs> for say now. this for now <laughs> until I probably see it again. And let me say this, the format of the episode, now that I know what episode it was, uh, we were doing something different where we were like, so that one was episode 49 comedy podcasts. And it was me and producer Chris versus two of the other co-hosts who can find the worst comedy podcast. We were competing, playing clips like this one's the worst. No, this one's the worst kind of thing. And so I didn't do my normal deep dive. And even when I do an, a deep dive into a podcast that I'm reviewing, it's hard to know all the lore and everything that's going on. Oh, I all get the it. So I, for your guys show, I probably watched one episode and so, yeah, there's going to be a lot of assumptions and things like that. You're just and like, well, that's it. not what we're talking about at all. You know, you understand this. But on the other side, I used to say this a lot when we first started the show. And because I get that a lot. It's out of context. You don't understand. You don't know who, who's doing what and why they're doing it, which is fair. But also, and this is something that I need to do a better job of myself. Assume that the listener is tuning in for the first time. This oh. episode you're going to do, first time listener. So they need to understand what's going on. I, I agree with that 100%. Gonna, yeah. And I, I'm trying... Uh... Hard. I, I'm. My fear is I'm putting more effort into this than is is worth it. But than us too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, certainly I am. I think that's what he was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. he did. Well, I, that but that's not a question. I mean, I I produce it. I put. I clip it together. That's I do, I'm, why I'm, we I'm, got I'm doing you. all the work. They, we know we can't up. do shit. So the the basis of our thing is when me and B first started this, whatever five six years ago, uh, we started. We didn't have a producer. We kind of like you said, you wanted to just talk to your buddy for you know an hour a week. It was kind of an excuse put the phones down and just kind of have conversation. And that was what me and B's whole point of it was talk about our fucking, our lives. Interesting things happen enough that you're right. Some people may not find them interesting people who may know us. It is a pretty local, uh, listen, listenership in here, but we had one producer who overburned himself. Cause he was doing like, he was kind of like Ryan and quit. Then we had a guy who really didn't produce it. Like, he, then he moved overseas, which was a shit show. And me and him just always wanted Jesus, to do that's it. That's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 And me and B just always wanted to keep doing it because it was fun. 
Like, it's not that we don't try hard. It's not that we don't want it to be good. But now that we got Ryan and now we actually have, a, like, a legit producer and now we're kind of getting comfortable with yeah. him, our intentions are to kind of, you know... Take it more seriously. Take it more serious yeah. and see what we can and do I, And when they it. sent me your, your podcast, I was like, well, let's listen to them. Like, these are people who listen to a lot of podcasts. I'm like, maybe they have things to say that we should consider. You know, like, I, I don't think... After listening to the podcast, I don't think that we learned anything from the podcast because... I also thought I don't think we're bad enough for a good episode of your podcast. So I didn't think your episode was very good, but only because I don't think we're bad enough for your po- that episode to be good. So maybe you are good what you do. You just need a better, a, a, a better, a worse podcast to, to be good at it. Um, but I, I just like I told them like maybe we should have a meeting. You know, we should have like a plan. We should yeah. have, like maybe do a little more pre production. Like let's figure out how to make this better than what it is. Like I love hanging out with these guys. I love just shooting the shit. But the same, I always think about what if it's the first person, first time somebody's listening to it. Are you going to get them back? That first impression is so important, and so much. Right. We have so many options. So like, let's make these clips tight. Let's make these videos tight. Let's have something, you know, <laughs> something to say. And it's it's a lot of work, but I feel like I I agree with you. Like the, those that first listen is is so important. Yeah, and our listeners oh. are just a, the same group of people. I don't. We're not. I don't know how if we're growing. You know, it's it's yeah, a it's, it's a tight. It's people that listen every week. Um, not on YouTube, by the way. That's why we have no views for some reason. Yeah, we definitely. Most of our listenership is definitely because li- they were just a podcast for years, and then it was only recently we started. Same here. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I I thought there was some good points. I you know I I don't know. We can definitely do better. I don't want to burn you out, Ryan. I love doing it. I've, I've been you know I've been you know Opie and Anthony fans since that was so always long, and I just I've always wanted to do a podcast, and I just feel like you know most sometimes I feel like we're cosplaying as podcasts, like we're just you know it's, oh it's fun oh we're doing the thing that we like to listen to we're doing yeah. we're doing one too it's like kind of it's cute but I also, I also think that we have potential to be a decent podcast so yeah and that, well that's why I was like me and B always feel bad asking our producers of too much too because it's not like we're paying him. Like we don't have Wait, a, uh, we don't have a fuck. <laughs> but I'm saying it's not like we're bringing somebody in and we're gonna be like, listen, we're gonna throw you a, a couple bucks and yeah. like help us out. So I, uh, B feels bad about asking anybody to do anything, and I'm a little more like, all right, fucking, you know, he said yeah. he's gonna do it. Let's let's do it. But yeah, you're right. So I, I honestly, I appreciate you more now. And I, I I listen. I wanted to come on and be like, fuck this guy, fuck you, and kind of be like, I almost would have been like, fuck you, and then cut you off, but. <laughs> You turned him, Carl. <laughs> no, no, it's not even that he turned me. I just understand it more. And we told you the same thing. I no, said, Mike, this guy is no different than us. Like, he, Mike, and I said, if you watched our podcast, you'd say the same shit about us that he's saying. Yeah. About oh, I pro- and like, I probably would. And yeah. that's why I also like. I'm not that sensitive. I get an emotional reaction right away. Yeah, yeah. Where I'm like, fuck this yeah. guy. This is good. This is. Car- I, I appreciate you coming on, Carl, and giving us your time. And this is this is very cathartic for for our, our friends. Yeah, I can yeah, tell. Yeah. That. That's great. Well, I'll, I'll tell you guys this because uh, similar to like what you went through with uh, past producers and stuff. When uh, Kevin and I, my first co-host and I, were doing the show, we were doing it every week, and uh, about two years, no, a little over a year in, I get a text from him, and he goes, I'm not into it anymore, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop doing the podcast. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm enjoying it, this mm-hmm. is fun for me, you know, this is a fun hobby. So I, w- I was kind of bummed that day at work, and I went, all right, well, you just do one more episode with me, and we'll say that you're leaving the show, and then I'm going to try to find other people to fill in for you. So then it turned into I was like looking for a new co-host, but it worked out better because I was rotating my friends coming in and out and doing the show with me. And it actually was an interesting and more fresh show because different voices on every episode. So you'll play into Andy's strengths versus Crow's strengths versus Chris's strengths. And and so it was a different feel every episode and a different vibe. And I realized this is actually the, the format to go with. But even with that said, about two years in, I was kind of burned out. I was working a lot of hours. I owned a company at the time, and I was doing this on my Saturdays, taking all Saturday. We were getting a couple hundred listeners, downloads, maybe 400 on a good show or something like that. And I went, you know what? I think I'm done with this. I, it, it was fun, but mm-hmm. it's too much work. And uh, that was Memorial Day weekend uh, 2017. No, maybe 2018. Yeah, 2018 was uh, somebody clipped up the episode I did about OP Radio. <laughs> they put it up on YouTube oh, wow, yeah. and it got 70,000 views the first day. Wow. And then that wow. Tuesday morning, Jim and Sam were talking about it. Anthony Kumia was talking about it. That's like great. everyone in the ONA subreddits and everything like that. We're, we're talking about it. So I was like, oh shit. Okay. Now we're, now we got something going. Yeah. Is that kind of why show, you after that. kept on hitting those, like those things? Cause the audience was asking for that. 
or was it something yeah, when you I, wanted to do? This, this, was the, this was the craziest thing to me because I was just doing a show under the radar. My friends didn't even know I did it. No one cared. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm getting hit up by people who used to work with Opie, used to produce the Opie and Anthony show. Like, all these people are coming out of the woodworks to reach out to me like, Carl, you nailed it. This guy sucks. I've been saying this for years. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, wow, holy shit. I wow. really tapped a nerve here. <clears throat> yeah. So then we started doing an Opie segment every show because a lot of people were tuning in just to hear. Yeah, that's good. I, I would was thought. I mean, I, I feel the same way about Opie. Like, I watch it being like, you know, how is this guy in the room with these people? Yeah. Like, it's so embarrassing. But... um. I've bumped into him a couple of times, you know, living on Long Island, and uh, yeah. I haven't seen him since I've been doing the show. But I'm always like, if I bumped into him, would I invite him to come on the show? And like, he never, he never would, because I don't think he's comfortable. Like, I, he knows, I think. More. Yeah. But I'm like, and how, but how would I treat him? Would I? Because I'm interested, because he's got such a legendary background in this show, but also like I don't respect <laughs> what you do. <laughs> so it's like I want him on the podcast for like the numbers, but it's like, <laughs> what, what, what do I, what would I say to this guy? But. I mean, he so, doesn't even do numbers, though. If you look at what he's doing, it's really pathetic. Yeah, but he doesn't do numbers because nobody can sit through what he's doing. But wouldn't somebody watch him on another show, like to see, like I feel like, peop- like people, like handle- people watch yeah, you. Maybe. Yeah, people watch you talk about Opie because it's more interesting to hear other people talk about feel, him feel the same way him. about yeah. him. Yeah. So what podcast won the worst podcast in that competition? Did we? You know win? what? It's a, it's a good question. I don't remember if we won. <laughs> can you fucking DM me after the show and you find that out and let me know? If I, can, least, I can look it up. Yeah. I what, at least want to hope that we didn't win the fucking. What worst. um? What podcast do you like and listen to? Like, do you have any uh, recommendations for? Because I'm actually in a in a in a hole for podcasts now. I I've, I feel like oh. I'm I'm tired of a lot of the podcasts I, I listen to normally. I don't feel like he's gonna are like you? the same ones. Well, I'm interested. You, yeah. Oh, all right. I don't, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Where are you guys out of again? Long Island. Oh, you're you're long out. Okay, um, I th- for some reason I thought you relocated. I don't know why I thought that. Um, okay, so there's this show that I listened to that's kind of filled the void for me when I used to listen to Howard Stern, Opie and Anthony, and I'm not a big like pop culture guy. I don't watch television shows and award shows. I don't care about celebrities, but if there's shows talking about it, I know that they're tapping into what most Americans are interested in. So I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Uh, there's a show called The Drew Lane Show. And Drew Lane was the morning guy in Detroit for decades. He beat Howard Stern in the ratings. Uh, great personality, great morning show guy. So he does a podcast called The Drew Lane Show. It's four days a week. And they oh, cover all the topics. They cover okay. sports. This, I like this cover, idea because I used to listen to, um, what was the show in California? It was like uh, on K-Rock. There was like the famous morning show. Bob and, Bob and Tom. Bob and no, 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 not Bob and Tom because they're like they're in like the Midwest, aren't Bob and Tom in the Midwest? Oh, something, something like that. Tom and there's uh and Bean something. Yeah, in- Kevin and Bean. Kevin, Kevin and, and Bean. Bean. So um, you know, not not groundbreaking stuff, but the same type of thing. I, I liked there was like my ear to the street of pop culture. I wasn't interested in the thing, but I liked knowing. I liked being up on it. That's and why I, I liked was listening to Stern. And, it was four days a week, OB and I feel like I got then. it was an easy way to just get through all the stuff. And you know, okay. I do drive a truck for a living, so it's it's four, three hours of just like information I can easily so I, i'd recommend that show but um another show that i'd recommend so my buddy blind mike geary he's a professional podcast he does it for a living he has a show called why are you laughing and it's a history of comedy podcast so he'll go in and break down joan rivers and oh, just really? go through the whole history of joan rivers hmm. or you know any of these these guys he also likes to do episodes where he goes to his favorite stand-up specials and he'll do like a breakdown of David Tell's Skank for the Memories or, or things like that. So wow. if you're into comedy, I highly recommend. So he talks about good, like he's talking about that. good stuff and like why why would this yeah. be funny? Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's just a huge fan, and he just he breaks it down why it's good. And, yeah, and I have goes to, to uh, ten years ago, twelve years ago, I started a podcast with a buddy of mine because we both love stand up and we were going to analyze comedy, and you know we never did it, but I would be I would be interested to. Hear I'm that. curious. Yeah, so check check that out. It might inspire you. What are your thoughts of Howard now? Oh, unlistenable. Okay, I agree. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm with you. Know, you. you know when I, you know when I tapped out, I officially, I was still listening to him, even though I wasn't enjoying it. I was because it was just a habit. I've been doing it since the '90s. I was still listening to him until March of 2020. COVID hit. Howard is now microwaving salads that get delivered to his house. I'm like, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Anymore. Well, yeah. <clears throat> this guy has fucking lost his mind. He has. This yeah. is so bad. Uh, I it's, haven't listened to him. I, I even just wish it had. I loved Howard back in the day. Such I a just, great interview. I just wish it was over now. I I want it to I be know. done. I was always a uh, a Bennington fan over over anybody. You were a Bennington. Yeah, guy. Was, yeah. yeah. Ron, Ron Bennington was fantastic. Um, one still more, is, real quick. Still is. 
Oh, for sure, for sure. One more real quick. Uh, Tim Dillon, the Tim Dillon Show. Do you guys watch that? Yeah, you mentioned him on our episode of our podcast. We actually, I know, I know Tim Dillon. I, you know, I came up with Tim. Yeah, I, I beat, one. I beat Tim Dillon in a comedy contest. Um, <laughs> Six years ago, you did, yeah, I did, yeah. But I always say, I always make, I always say that says more about comedy contests than it does about either of our comedy because he was, I was at his second open mic ever, and he was a killer. The second time he ever got on stage, and then I'm like, how was this guy this good? Yeah. He's, he just started doing comedy. He's just been that personality since day one. Knew who he was. Just a brilliant, brilliant comic. Um, well, I've seen him do stand up three times now, and. I think that he's better at podcasting, and I don't say that lightly because he's a very good stand-up. Yeah, yeah. But he wasn't that good at first because I, I remember listening to Tim Dillon years ago. Yeah, Tim Dillon was, was going a lot to of hell. I think was... and crutch words and things that I always rail on as far as broadcasters go. You can't sound like a moron when you're talking. He's kind of gotten away from that. He does a lot better. He doesn't say like so much, and just the shit that he comes up with out of his head. And I think guys like Tim Dillon and even Shane Gillis. They give people the sense that, oh, yeah, I'm funny. I can just sit there yeah. and shoot the shit with my buddy or by myself and come up with amazing things. Like most people can't. 99.9% cannot. There's a few guys who really pull it off well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's he's incredible. Uh, he used to do a podcast about food. I actually preferred um, him and Ray Kump used to do a podcast yeah. about food. Oh, did they? I yeah. And then, they did, and, then, and then they did Tim Dillon was going to hell. But I, I remember actually, Tim I, my favorite po- I liked. I preferred his podcast about food because I like that type of silly thing like he, tim gets a little too deep for me in, in in you know in the weeds and also you said like he talked like he knows what he's talking about i i took objections to that i think he's just as stupid as the rest of us he just got the confidence to say things and act like and then people believe what he says but i've i've, I've i know i've spent time with him and i've he's <laughs> I, I i would imagine you don't get into a lot of deep state conversations being the uh, libcock soy boy that you are right but no but he's more like that <laughs> you probably think the cia is all good and they actually have our interests in mind um no i i be honest with you, i don't consider that as much as you might think like it's not part of my world but i don't think but he's but Tim dylan talks about that stuff I, I, that's why i, I no no i know that but like yeah he wouldn't bring it up to me but we talk about Arnie defranco and like <laughs> he's he's right. i think he's more like uh you know Long Island liberal than I think he lets off in, on his podcast because he knows it's an angle. I think he's playing a lot of an angle, and I, I respect it. I, I think he's good at it, but I don't know. Tim Dillon, just just a nerd out real quick. Tim Dillon did a, a quick series. It's gone now, unfortunately. I think they did like five episodes. It was called uh, Radio Bastard. You guys familiar with that? No. Bastard Radio. And it was uh, Louis J. Gomez, Nick Mullen, and Tim Dillon, which is an all-star mm. team right there. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Nick Mullen yeah. from yep. – when we come down now. Yeah. Who was the second guy? Uh, um, so Louis J. Louis Gomez. J. Gomez. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Because then you said something about an all-star lineup, and I was like, "But didn't you say Louis J. Gomez?" <laughs> well, he's fucking Lewis awful as comedy. He's, he's a good podcaster, but as far as the stand-up, he's fucking unwatchable. But you need the guy on the show who runs the show. Well. Sure, I think that that's yeah. You need an Opie. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So you get him with Nick Mullen and Tim Dillon. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a that's a good podcasting wise. That's a good lineup. Yeah. Um, sure. Tim Dillon did a sh- line of shows. So he used to be a tour guide um, in That's Manhattan, oh, yeah, tour bus. Yeah. But he got uh, yeah. he got like in, in good with the company. And then once he started to break as a comic, they started doing comedy tours with him because he used to make up shit on the tour on the yeah. tour bus all the time. Mm-hmm. And he would do comedy shows on the tour bus. I went to one, and he would just like fuck with people on the street. He'd make up things about the buildings. You know, we talk about you know how the, how the wealthy and just how they're animals and stuff like that. But it was like one of the funniest. <laughs> Tim Dillon is his best. If you ever seen him on a Long Island room, rip apart Long Islanders, that's when his stand up is better than his podcasting. When he's just improving and shitting on people yeah. in the room, yeah. myself included. You know, it's he's <laughs> it's yeah, he's something special. Sure. <laughs> sure. Well, I, I know the meeting said uh, twelve to one thirty. I don't want to scare you into thinking we we expect you to be here for an hour and a half. Uh, we I appreciate your time. You know, we're going to record a little bit longer, but. I don't want to hold you the rest of that. Do you guys have anything else you want to say to Carl? No, I no. hated you, and now I, uh, I I have respect for you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I do appreciate you coming on. I hope you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I hope that some people check you out. I don't want like to lose listeners because like next thing you know, like I'm like, oh, did you listen to the show? I was like, nah, I've been listening to who are these podcasts. I'm like, fuck you, I can't. Like, <laughs> you, you switch teams on us. But uh, I hope it's beneficial for you that you know. I know I know you have a good amount of listeners, but everybody could always use a couple more. So. I, of I, course. I, who are these.com is where you can go to find out things. Who are these.com? All right. All right. Well, 
Big, anything else? No, no. Again, thanks for coming on. Uh, I appreciate it. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll probably listen to some more of your stuff and see, see yeah, what cool. happens. Yeah, appreciate it. I don't listen to anybody's podcast, so. Yeah, yeah, he's not a podcast Good. man. You should listen to podcasts if you're going to do one. Help. I, that's, I, that's, they've been, been trying to tell me that. this yeah. for a while. I, you know, we'll see. Uh, but you, please send me uh, comedy clips if you, if you want to. I, I'd love to show those to uh, Mike Geary and get his take. Yeah, that sounds like a great. Yeah, move. we'll send you that. Uh, we'll send <laughs> that you sounds that. like a great move for me. So you can <laughs> sit on by. <laughs> no, I, I I've been in B shows. I, I truly think he's uh, like a great comic, very natural. Oh, we'll be we'll be fair about it. I promise you. That. Yeah, appreciate um, that. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Right, we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Carl. Because be good, dude. That All was right. Carl Hamburger. What'd you Carl think? Carl Hamburger. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I'm like yeah. more on your side now. I, I mean, that's like, it went exactly like I thought it was going to go. Was, yeah. 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 He I'm was like, going to come guy... with some of his shots. Like, I don't see necessarily on, and I don't necessarily. Agree oh, I went to tell him. I said, I was going to say, I'll send you the. Patreon thing we're gonna do. I said, just know that like, we definitely went hard on you, but, but it, it's like I yeah. don't care. He went hard on us. Yeah, but I don't want to think like that we're like two facing him by being like. No, I don't but that's yeah, what you have to do. If, if you're defending yourself, you got to be hard about but it. But we I mean, and we told them we did it before we did this. Yeah, we, so we let them like, know yeah. we did that. Yeah, yeah. Um, listen, I, I get it. Like you know, yeah. I don't have to be thrilled. That I don't. You know, I, when I hang out with that guy, I don't know mm -hmm. honestly. If he's, he's very different than us. He, um, yeah, he, exactly. His approach, the fact that he even. To me, speaks to Opie and Anthony, like or, or uh, Anthony Cumia. To me, like it, again, liberal soy boy, yeah, cuck. Yeah. Um, well, that's why I, like, I feel like, he, like you two are polar opposite. Anthony is like just like a legitimate hateful racist. Like if you ever listen, like he throws around the n word. Like he's a fucking terrible person now. Oh, I, yeah. I used to be a huge fan of his, but the fact that you could still like throw around like, oh yeah, Anthony was on the show like recently. I would, like that, yeah, that, that's that tells me everything about you. That but I, I also think as far as us getting along, you know I, what I mean? exactly because yeah. I feel like he thinks the same thing of you in the other life. Sure. And yeah, I'm yeah, not judging you. Yeah. I, I just like but that's, that's but that's what we need to get in the world where we can have you can disagree about shit like that, and then and we have, had a, a conversation, conversation and not like be yeah. like, I hope you die. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's right? Not, it didn't get too heated at all. Yeah. You know? You, I think we're I, saving the world here by doing this. this is I actually do think. I mean, I don't know about his the, the mutual respect. I like to think that anybody who invites you on after you shit on them, and we have a respectable yeah. conversation uh -huh. on here should develop some sort of respect for you. Yeah. Right. Uh whether he does or doesn't, whatever, I can honestly say that we're not too stupid or, you know, weak to just be like, well, we'll have a conversation about yeah. it. Yeah. We yeah. didn't I feel like it went pretty well. And uh I I appreciate him a little more than I I'm glad I'm glad to hear that. I, I knew yeah. that you I, were I like, gonna I hope to take any heart to hate out of your heart that makes me feel good. My buddy but, Sean texted me. Well I texted him like, yo, we're about to do the show with that douchebag who fucking ripped us. Uh -huh. And he goes I almost want to read his text because it actually was. I'm glad he sent it right before I came on, but he said, uh, "Make make yourself a promise not to get in your feelings. Have fun with it." Good. Well, I think he did That's a good job. Smart. So I, it honestly made me think. Yeah. Like, uh, by the way, I've been saying that for well, no, a week. I know you and, have, and, but and you always like, say shit, and I also you didn't say anything that whole episode. You were quiet. Like, there was not much to I say. Get it, I get know. It. I'm not. I, I, like I told you, I asked you I said, before you came in. I'm like, do you have anything planned that you want to say? Like, I had a bunch of shit that I did want so to did say. I. So I had a lot of like negative I, things that like I wanted I, to bring up, and I didn't need. I to really had nothing. And um, the whole thing about I asked him about like about wanting to um, like, do you feel bad about it? Because like, I'm always trying to encourage people to do. Shit I'm glad. I love that part. I, I think yeah. that was that was a good thing to. So ask. that that was really what I was most interested in getting at. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, I get it, you know, I'm not as, like, I, I, again, I had moments of, like, I was completely didn't care about it, and then when I would listen to it, it would yeah. kind of reinvigorate. And then it's also my... different, when you're looking at somebody's face, and, like, you're about to talk to them, but a, lot, a lot of stuff can just, like, wash away, and you're like, oh, this is a person, like, and, like, mm -hmm. he's not, like... But not even that, he wasn't aggressive, Yeah. yeah. like, he didn't come out here, like, he made his dibs, but that's yeah. expected, and yeah. he should, that's what he does. Also, because this is what he does, like, oh, this is not, what he does. it's not one podcast that he picked, it's just us, it's like, he's been doing this... Yeah. Shitting on all podcasts, mm -hmm. you know. So I, know, I said that's why I was like, and my when my like I was just thinking like if I come on here and I'm just trying to be a dick and one I'm either gonna look like an asshole, or it's just not gonna be <laughs> listenable or funny. Yeah. So I kind of was like, you I, know that's what? good. I, I, again, I feel cathartic about it. I'm happy that it's over. I happy wish I knew what cathartic that... meant, but I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, you don't know like, it it like, a, like a healthy was, yeah you like, know what i was thinking of when someone feels nostalgic that's why i <laughs> know no, he also did make me feel nostalgic for 2002 <laughs> opie and anthony <laughs> yeah yeah but so i did go on his reddit because i when he was talking about that 
when I was kind of dabbling through yeah. it last night, and he does. He's got a he's got an equal amount of people who fucking hate him and people who love. Sure. Him. And I, I hope you don't feel at any point like I was shitting on YouTube. I'm like, yeah, then you know, I'm trying to make them no, better. No, you're not I just, wrong. I'm I just, all about it's not wrong. Yeah, and it's fine. Like I, I've said this to people. I don't know if I've said it to you, but I'm like, you guys have been doing this a long time, so you kind of just get in a groove. And it's like, yeah, we're fun doing this. But I'm like, I see, like as a newcomer, I see potential for the three of us but together. Things like this make you that. realize, like, yeah, let's step it up. You can just like all take something to hit. Like let's shit on Opie. <laughs> That's yeah. worked for them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I could do that all day. Shit on Opie. Um, well, I we have talked about, like you said, you know, if B can find it, the time to, um, him, you know, actually outside of this, yeah. to maybe sit down and meet with us, we'll do it. Separate. Are, are you are you good? At, you guys good at basketball? I want to do a. Am I, wanna, I good at? Basketball? I want to do a game of horse. I want to do. Oh, I want a yeah. game. I would love. To I want to do, do a, shooting. I'll be okay. Shooting. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible shooter. We were saying him last week. What? Did you pick up a ball? Yeah, I bought said, a ball oh, and went yeah, down to the park, and I'm fucking. I'm like, I'm looking at the ball. Like, what's wrong with this? Played realistically. Shot around seven years before that. Okay. And, I, and I was trying to do like turnaround shots, like I was trying to get cute with it. I'm like, Let's, I tell him, I'm like, I need to set myself, look, yeah. get the, get the, the get strength the, get down, the form get the, down get the again. Form down, and then you can start playing around a little exactly. bit. It's been a while though. It's been so, you know, I haven't shot a basketball in probably seven years myself. So, so it'd be fun to play a game of horse. Like I've uh, been, you know, coach, and I'm always shooting. Oh yeah, coach. Yeah. We doing the free throws last year with my buddies. So um, I haven't like, I, like, I don't have a lot of cardio. So my games, my in game stuff is yeah. like. Yeah. I get out of cardio, so the game isn't. And great. then when you play horse, do you do like well, how goofy do you get with your shots? If I you're like playing horse? no, and to me, and when a ten foot hoop, like just shooting. If it's you, like if you, if you could shoot, do an shot, easy shot, shot from here, yeah. shot from there. Yeah, because when you're a kid, it was always like you, know, you bounce it here and you throw it up there and you spin here and then yeah. you, like you lay up there like that's <laughs> Kick it's a, a fun. Rock. So I played I played horse with Monique uh, last week. And I was like, kind of just shooting, and she was like, she's like, oh, what if we do this? I think I tried once. I tried to like bounce it into the net. I'm like, oh, she even can bounce it, and then she took off from that. She goes, oh, we can do weird shit. So she's doing, <laughs> she's spinning and she's going around the court, and she's like, and I'm like, now I got to do that. Shit? I'm like, I'm yeah. praying she doesn't get the shot because yeah. I'm like, I don't want to be, I don't want, I want to be galloping because like, <laughs> yeah. then you got to gallop, then you got to skip, then you got to spin on your back, and then you, I'm like, just, and then, but then you get to a spot and then you set and shoot, and I'm like, then you just set and shoot. Like, can I just go set and shoot? Right. Yeah, I got to do the whole thing before you look like an idiot before you shoot. Yeah, um, it's funny because I played a uh, horse, but in a um, pool on the oh, Sunday. Oh, I used to love doing that. My buddy's got a really that's funny. good basketball net in the pool. It's not like a cheat. It's like a regular basketball yeah. net, but yeah, in back, the pool. like a like a, like rim, a real like backboard a, um, and rim. Backboard, yeah. like you could dunk this shit and like yeah. hammer it down. But can you can't play. I like the best. I like the non-rim pool basketballs because you can get from any angle. Like it's kind of floating around. And you can just oh, those ones. Those are, are the fun. Mid-pool. Those are fun when you're. I feel like when you're just mingling around. But me yeah, and my yeah. buddy for this, we were yeah. starting having like a free throw contest, and it was a lot of fun. I had I had one of those uh, like you're talking about um, on the side. And what was that game? You like everybody? You, three Knock guys out? play. No, not oh, knockout. Chicago, around the world. 21. Oh, Chicago. 21, it's all. Yeah. 21's where you hit free throws, and when you miss, wherever you get the rebound, no, it wasn't you got to shoot from there. Man. This was when everybody just. That's Chicago. That, it was Chicago. We used to play Chicago in the pool. You oh got to hit God. the shot from where you get the rebound. Oh, is that? I never played that. There's a lot of games. Yeah, I forget all the yeah. rules, but it was fun. But I'm already thinking about. It. I had to film it. Like I'm gonna put a. Dr- I'm gonna film from the drone down below, and then mm. I'm gonna also shoot like a wide shot for us. I think like a adult baby's game of horse. Oh, or we even, even, do even that. around the world, I think would so be fun. Listen to this. I was hanging out with a um, old guest of the show, mic'd up by the way, so we can uh, we can hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me and B had uh, a while. Oh, this was probably COVID uh-huh. when we had Crystal and um, her friend Jen. Oh yeah, Jenna, yeah, yeah. Jen, yes. Janine, Jenna, Jenna, I think it was. Uh huh. Um, they were bartenders at B's local uh, brewery. They still are. Yeah, well, Crystal is. Well, yeah. Crystal is, and B was like, "Oh, it would be fun to have her on." So she came on. We actually had a really fun episode. It was that one was of our fun. higher view episodes. But um, she has her own horse, and she was like been into horse riding her <laughs> whole life. So last time when she was on, I told her I want to ride the horses, and for whatever you know, out of sight, out of mind, it never happened. Mm-hmm. So I see her yesterday because she's now dating one of my uh, friends. And I'm like, yo, I still want to do this fucking horse thing. So yeah. we had like a talking for a while about it yesterday. And she's like, I think it'll be good content for the show. She doesn't know you exist. But she goes, you well, should get B. Something. No, no, <laughs> because she doesn't let. She was just like, oh, you should get B and it'll be good content for your show. I think we should do that. That'd be fun. So we're going to go riding horses. But I'll, uh, if you're into it, I'll see if we can get a third person. Yeah. All right. Have you ever ridden a hobby horse? No, that's why I've never been on a horse ever. I'm not going to a horse. Hobby horse. A hobby horse. You know a hobby horse? Yeah. But you, ever, you ever see these, you ever see these What's videos? What's going on here? What are you doing? 
Can you see this? Oh, yeah. yeah. You ever see these competitions? Oh, competitions. come on. These are when people <laughs> run and act like they're horses. Yeah. Like they're showing up. I don't want to play this music, though. Um, it, so Nick these, Tardo has a great joke about these About hobby. these people? Yeah. This yeah. is actually embarrassing to do this. So they, yeah, they right? run around. Right? Right? They yeah. run around. <laughs> I mean, they're young girls, but it's like, I'm, I'm just. <laughs> Interested. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Dude. I do feel bad making fun of these little girls. Yeah, that's, but, but it's fun. It's just they have to know that it's like, what do you? Is are it, they? Are they? Do they? Re, do they really ride? They must really also ride horses. But this is something they do like inside. No, when see, it's, I don't think these they, people they, ride. I feel like they these wish are the they people. No, this is it. Look at the way their their legs are like. She's a doing horse dressage. Gallop. She's doing dressage. Dr dressage. Dressage. Yeah. How is it? What is that word called? I don't know. Dressage. I don't know. That's like when you make the horse like dance, like dance sideways yeah, and shit like they that. They look so serious that I <laughs> Ooh, feel like they, make the drum. they <laughs> practice this so they much practice. that this is why I can't take it serious. Yeah. They do like side saddle. There's a great. <laughs> so people just listening. Yeah. There's a people riding. You know those hobby horses? There's just a stick and then a horse's head and you put it on your leg and you're supposed to. I don't know. What's the intention of this toy to begin with? You just... Maybe these are people who can't afford um, a horse. She's, look how a emotional horse. she is that she won. <laughs> she really is torn, torn up about that she's she won. hugging the hobby yeah. horse. Well, look at the. The, the, the watch it's sweet. you see that there's a kid across the street from my parents that just runs around on a hobby horse and we think something might not be right about that <laughs> but maybe That's, they're just people who have like these imaginations and it's like let your imagination yeah. go and and it's still like I'm you're like, doing a thing the fact that there's a horse on the top of it like if you just stuck a stick in your leg and then tried to jump things like that yeah. know, that that's you know this is as much of a sport as anything else is the equal sport I, listen i mean it is you know? what it is I it's just the, the fact that there's a horse head sticking out of it but i think like, the, i think the biggest thing at that the uh the technique comes down to the leg movements yeah because they really have the movement of a horse yeah you ever see that video of uh, of Snoop Dogg where, where he's watching a horse do that 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 dance thing? Dressage. There's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's doing that. He's like, oh oh, he's sea walking on him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I think it was during the Olympics, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's an Olympic event. Oh my god. Oh, looks god. weird. That was good. Um, do we want to? We're almost at an hour, but uh, are we? I don't know. Yeah. What's going on? Nothing. You look really. confused. You got a confused look on you. Because face. I are we are we can like what's are we doing a We're second? Stop and then if you okay. want to do a second, we'll do a second we'll one. Stop but, and do the second. Yeah, let's thought. do that. I did want to. Did you guys see the video? I had posted a link to a video. The guy moderated a Republican debate. No. Um, last week. I haven't just, watched. I, I'm I so sick of politics. Yeah. Well, this is not. I didn't watch the debate either. But somebody put like a recap of this guy. Oh, so I didn't this guy, see. this moderator, uh, like, did you ever. I hate debates because they're just they're, there's not, they're they're useless. Yeah, nobody's saying anything. Politicians they don't just, answer they don't answer the questions. Yeah. They'll, fun take of each a, other. They'll, they'll take a question. Well, now it's yeah since Trump it's them making fun just of each other. You know Trump debates I'll watch because they're kind of entertaining. Yeah, I can't stomach to watch them, but I, I understand. Like right. I hate him, but when he was sitting behind Hillary, like yeah, standing behind her, yeah. it was just so weird. But this guy did everything you want from a, a moderator. Like he told like. These these people that ask questions and then a politician will start talking. By the time they get to it, they haven't answered. They haven't even approached the, approached the topic that the guy asked about. This guy was like, "You're not answering the question. Like, go back. Like, I'm asking. Like, it's just, he'll be like, this is a yes or no question. Like, answer yes or no. And he'll be like, no, I need a number. He's like, or and then one time, like, she, they weren't getting the answer. He goes, well, he goes, well, we tried to get an answer, but I guess we'll try again. You know, we'll take we'll have you know another day. We'll we'll try to tackle that. But he was just like said everything you want these people to say to, and it's like it's this will happen to be a Republican debate, but the same thing. Dem Democrats right. do the oh, same. The same like thing. they talk in circles just as much, They're and you just want somebody like, to smack, avoid smack the one in the face and be like, answer the fucking question. Like we're depending on you. Like we're gonna vote for you. Like these policies you're talking about, you can't double talk. You can't be like, oh, I don't want to offend certain people. How do you feel? What are you gonna do? And this yeah. guy, this guy did is yeah, Kyle Clark is his name. Kyle Clark. I'm like this guy gives me hope for the future. Like literally, like I just I I, I really. I, I hope. Oh, and that what is he? Kyle. He was. Clark? He was just a moderator. My moderator. He, he worked. He was like NBC and like Colorado work or uh, Channel Nine News in Colorado, and they just got him to host this thing. Huh. And he just went in and just slaughtered these people. Did you send like, that to us? I posted it on my Instagram stories. Oh, okay. I just like a friend of mine posted it. I, you know, I don't pay attention that much either because I it's, I find it depressing. But I find it depressing because of the way they talk, like they talk. Yeah. I'm like, okay. this was it's just so encouraging. I'm like, if everybody treated politicians like this guy did, we'd have like we'd we'd be somewhere. We'd be somewhere. We'd, we'd yeah, something. man. Mm. Yeah, I agree. But I didn't say it, so I can't really. Uh, yeah. But I'll take your word for it. I'll yeah. take your word for it. <laughs> I thought like, I thought it went in in keeping with uh, the conversation about no. you know being honest and uh, 
having com- open conversations with people that we might disagree with, but get, <laughs> getting getting to the point of things. Look at that. I feel Good like job. It's, it's important. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, guys, if you made it this far, we really appreciate you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you guys for listening. Yeah. Thank and, you. And sp- seriously. Thank you for listening. You're the ones that keep us, you know. Like, subscribe, and give us more views so people like Carl Hamburger don't shit on us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, thanks again to Carl And if Hamburger. you have any notes, like Carl Hamburger, send us notes. If you think there's something we could do better. Tell us what we could do better. Yeah. I like how we handled it. Huh? I like how we handled it. Do you? Yeah. Are you comfortable? Good. I, I'm, I, I was concerned that you were going to be mad at me because I was going to be a little too kind to the guy. No, because if I wanted to say something, I had every sure, ability right. to do but it. But you were yeah. t- also telling me, like, don't be nice to this guy. You know, don't try to like him. Well, yeah. I, I didn't want him to come in and really control everything. Yeah. You, yeah, I don't think he did. No. Yeah. No. We, we did most of the talking. It's And it is very funny how quick you turned. I mean, you Well, were... I was turning before I got here. Because okay. I was like, what am I going to do? Like, I, I, I was thinking yeah. about it. Like, I can't just shit and it's not going to be funny i'm going to look like a butter yeah I'm, I'm happy that you expressed like I, I was the one that you know hated you like i'm glad you expressed yeah. no, that. i that don't was good. butter it up to people i'll yeah. never lie or be dishonest all right you know all right yeah well thanks again thanks guys right. bye